Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Welcome to the BitLab Academy daily stream. Mm. Got to get my coffee. Hope everybody's feeling good this morning. Good and vibrant. It is Monday, August 21st, 2023. Are we living in the future? It feels like it. Everything's bizarre. Everything's, the world is crazy. But hey, we are in this digital asset ecosystem, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto. That's what we're here to talk about. My name's Kelly Kellum. If this is your first time. I can guarantee you it's not going to be your last time. That's all my information right there. Make sure you give me a follow. We're going to be talking about what's going on with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin primarily is our focus. And then we look at the altcoins because Bitcoin is the best uh, risk narrative coin to let you know where risk is within the digital asset ecosystem. Once we're in full bowl, then we can get a little bit of pullbacks on Bitcoin and have altcoins fly. But because everything still is so uncertain, we're not at the, the we're not post having yet with the where the parabola really starts to go. So if risk if risk comes off, aka sell off on Bitcoin, then you tend to see a lot of pressure on altcoins, which is why you saw altcoins fall, uh, you know, pretty dramatically. Uh, during that crash that happened, uh, you know, a few days ago. But is the crash over? Are we seeing signs of life? Is there data that suggests that we got some uh, some bottoming signals that we may get at least even maybe a potentially a relief rally and we can reevaluate from there? Well, we're going to be breaking all that down right now. We got 80 people in the room, 56 likes. Everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, and uh, let's dive right on into it. We're going to be talking about what's going on in these markets. We're going to be breaking down a lot of charts. So let's stay involved. And I want everybody in the room right now, if you're feeling grateful, throw a one in chat. You need something. If you're trying to find something to to be grateful for, throw a two in chat. It's okay. You don't have to say you're grateful if you're not. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we stew in our our own sort of negative conversations we have in our head, but we got to jump back on the path as quick as possible. The difference between success and failure is how fast do you get back on track when you get off the path. So let's go ahead and dive on into it. Uh, oops, wrong, uh, wrong, all the wrong buttons this morning. Uh, make sure you give me a follow right here at Kelly Kellum. And secondarily, uh, and actually primarily, I should say, make sure you get involved over here at the BitLab Academy page, which looks like this. Make sure you're following the right page at Academy BitLab. Give us a follow here. And on today's post, make sure you hit that retweet, hit that like button. I do want to shout out too, if you have, if you did not watch the Saturday video, it's this video right here. Uh, Bitcoin crash, don't make this mistake. And it has a, a, a thumbnail that says number one uh, crypto mistake. Great interview with Mark Yusko. Shout out to him. We had about an hour to talk about everything going on in the markets. What, what investors that fail, what they fail to realize, you know, and, uh, you know, basically some strategies and thoughts and how, how to really understand what's going on in the market and, and really take advantage of a great interview here. Again, if you want to retweet this one right here uh, and hit that like button. That also enters you to win. So if you haven't done that, and then of course, this one right here, today's, hit that retweet, hit that like button, and we're going to be picking a winner later on this afternoon. And uh, we are going to be giving away three-month membership to the BitLab trading stack. If any of the mods win, I will uh, offer them something else, and we will do another drawing uh, so we can drive this for you all. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. First off, let's start up with Bitcoin. Quick look. We're going to come back to this and do a bunch of TA on this in a little while, but we just, where are we at? Let's go over to the weekly. We just had a weekly close Sunday night, 8 p.m. So, uh, okay, let's zoom in here. And we see we had, of course, we know all about the downtrend we broke out of, came down, retested, pushed up. We see what's going on here. And interestingly, a lot of people fail to identify this parallel channel that we have right here. Parallel channel. Thank you very much, Karen. She said such a good, inter- great, uh, good interview. You knocked it out of the park, Kelly. Thank you very much. I, I, I love the opportunity to be able to talk to smart people like Mark and Jordan Lindsay and Will Clemente and all these folks. I got a lot more people coming up very soon. So we're going to be talking about that. Parallel channel here, though. We also have a rising wedge with the deviation above came back inside of it and lost the support of this. And where was the next support? Not only was it this parallel channel support that we have right here, but also this horizontal support that we have right here, which is previous very strong resistance at this 25 level, 24.9, 25, 25.2. Found support right on it. Now, question is, is this, uh, is this bearish divergence that we have right here on the BitLab trend fuel? Is that... 
one of those leading signals that let us know coming into this zone where we have so many different lines crossing. We have the diagonal line here. We have this horizontal line here. And we also have bearish divergence here. So there's plenty of signals that let us know that there is likely some sort of pullback happening uh, or in the cards. And that's exactly what happened. Came down to this level, lost this level, came down, boom, right into this level. And remember, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago now, I think somewhere about right here, I was talking about price action coming down to these fibs, 382, the 0.5, the 618. People called me bearish. Well, I'm not bullish or bearish. I'm an analyst. I look at the charts. I talk about what I'm seeing in the charts. And then I talk about both direction possibilities about where price action uh, is likely to go based on what I'm seeing in the data presented on the chart. Not only did we come down to these levels, we fell through them. So we came all the way down. Look at this wick all the way. To, I mean, it's to the line. Look at this. To the exact line. I didn't draw this after. This has been on this chart for for a minute. And I want to help all of you make sure that you can set up your charts so that you can identify targets and directions and possibilities so that you can make sure that you are lining up your, your strategy to work best for you. So we had this outlined, I mean, all the way, I mean, th this parallel channel was lined up all the way from uh, when these two points met, I had a projected out here. Now, some, I have many different charts. I mean, many different charts uh, that I have different possibilities and different angles on what's going on. But, I, you know, I like having different looks to see what the different possibilities are. And I go between those and I try to discredit my own thesis to see if it's possible. And if it can, if it's highly probable that it could be disproven, then it's not a good, it's not a good trade to take. Crimson Caravan Company, how you doing, my friend? We got 129 people in the room, only 67 likes. Everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us here. Um, by the way, if you are watching over on the Hit Network, shout out to everybody there. Make sure at some point you head over to the BitLab Academy page right here, youtube.com forward slash at BitLab Academy, or just search up here in the search bar, BitLab Academy, you'll find us. This is that, uh, this is that video I was talking about from last this last Saturday. Um, but come follow us here. Come uh, join, join, uh, join the community. We got a great community here. Now, coming back over to this chart, let's take a brief look at Ethereum and talk about what's going on there. We had a similar rising support here, but why did this rising support fall through whereas Bitcoin landed on the line? Well, as I talked about earlier, Bitcoin is more of, uh, it's not only its own asset, but it's also a good risk metric for what's going to likely happen with the rest of the, the crypto ecosystem. They're going to be typically more dramatically affected. Why? Because their market cap's smaller. Their market cap's smaller. Picture it this way. If an asset, why does market cap matter? Well, think about it this way. If, if you have a linebacker or any sports athlete that's 300 pounds and you have another athlete that's 180 pounds, which one is going to be easier to move? The one that's 180 pounds. Why? Because there's less mass there that you have to actually transmit energy to to move it. Similarly, when you talk about assets, whether it's crypto assets, traditional assets, anything, uh, anything that's tradable, when you have larger market caps, it takes more energy to move it. So you can apply the same energy to something with a large market cap and the same energy to something with a smaller market cap. The smaller market cap is going to move further and typically faster also. This is one of the drawbacks uh, benefits and drawbacks to trading altcoins. They can move very fast. In some aspects, if you stack it right, if you, if you stack your strategy in the, in the best way and manage your risk appropriately, you can make a lot more money a lot more quickly with altcoins. But that comes with the added risk of how fast they move when the energy is applied on downward pressure. So know that, and that's why it's so important to have good, healthy diversification within your portfolio and making sure that you're stacking an, a, a bit of an anchor in your portfolio of safety, and that is, you know, Bitcoin and ETH, and then progressively as you go down the line, that you get, you know, exponentially more and more risk the smaller the market caps are. So let's kind of come back over here, and we can see that Ethereum did lose this line. It sucked back up into it. Uh, but we, you know, we do have this rounding pattern sim similar that we saw on Bitcoin. Um, but the question is going to be, if we do lose, if we do come back down to this level, are we going to, 
hold around here or are we going to come down and test the bottom this liquidity down here that is outlined by these two order blocks here from the bitlab volume see these green bars here these are order blocks that automatically show up on the chart with this indicator that's part of the bitlab trading stack so we got to pay attention to that so now let's go ahead and go through some of the charts i want to talk about that's going to help us identify where we're at on the within the risk narrative of bitcoin and then we can attribute that down the line to what's the risk narrative of the entire crypto market. So coming over here, let's come right here. First things first, we got to talk a little bit about some broader things because this also could be impacting, you know, for instance, we have Jerome Powell speaking at the uh, Jackson Hole Summit or whatever it's called Friday. And last time that happened, that had a pretty big impact on markets because everybody's still wondering, are there going to be more interest rate hikes? Is there going to be further tightening? Is there going to be a pause? And so when you look at data like this, of course, this is not the U.S., this is Germany, but looking at other countries, looking at other, uh, you know, other countries on the global stage that are within the global asset markets, this can maybe give us a little bit of insight as to what's happening. We see Germany has uh, seen a massive drop in the inflation within their producer prices. Producer prices front run consumer prices on the shelf. It costs more to make something, it costs more to the consumer down the line. If the cost of making something goes down, then that that savings is passed on to consumers down the line. You know, you get a, a you know three to three to eight months sort of lag in those sorts of uh, setups. So we can see, look at this sharp decline. I, I'd like to see this in the U.S. as well. So now coming over here, uh, talking about Bitcoin, it's interesting that long-term holders of Bitcoin barely flinched in the last drop. So the last drop was driven primarily by the weak hands. It says, it's not going up now, so I'm getting out. It moved a little down. Long-term holders, look at this little flinch right here. What, are the, what, do we, what do I mean by flinch? This blue metric on the bottom, we can see up here, uh, percent long-term holders that supply is sent to exchange. This means long-term holders, people that have been holding for 155 days or longer, all the way up to years, right? Basically, there was a little bit of movement here, but I mean, look at how much this moved right here on this drop. A lot of people got, you know, fairly scared there, and then it moonshot. Long-term holders did not even flinch here. They've been buying, baby. So that's good. Strength of market still there. Looking here, when we're talking about altcoins, yes, they did move down a little bit further. But when you look at the total three, actually, this is a, a total market cap. Sorry. Uh, this, is, uh, this is total two. The total market cap excluding Bitcoin. We're still holding on the top side of this downtrend of resistance that we have flipped to support on this pullback. So in some ways, it could be argued that this push up that we had in the first half of the year and then the subsequent sell off that we just had. We just endured for the time being. All that it has, it has accomplished currently is confirming this as it stands right now, so long as we hold above this, confirming this as support. Did we have a candle go uh, beyond this? Yes, we have a wick down here. Before this closed, it came right back up here on top. So this is saying the bulls, the, the, the bears tried to break this back down, and this would have been scary because... I mean, this kind of tested the low side of this range here. If we lost this, then we could be in for, I'm talking, pain, max pain. But there's max pain. The definition of max pain shifts and adjusts and is fluid over time because max pain doesn't only mean down in price. If everybody gets very bearish and they call for lower prices, if 85% of the market is like, oh, no, it's going down, the max pain is price going up. So... Right here, everybody is very hopeful that this was about to break out. We got some pain with this coming down, and had we lost this level, this would have been very bad for, for price action, depending on how far down this came. But as it stands right now, the altcoin market, Ethereum and all alts, everything excluding Bitcoin, did break down and came back up and, and basically is sitting right on the, it's hanging on by a thread. So it's very interesting, even with all that downside, not much has changed. And I'm going to show you some, mo some more charts that exemplify that. Right now, though, I think it's time for everybody. This is a uh, borrow from DZ himself. 
Everybody, uh, take a sip of your coffee, your water, your orange juice. Mm. Now, let's go on to this next chart. I don't know if I put these in the correct order or not, but that's okay. We'll go through them anyway. So, this is, uh, this is zoomed out a bit, and we see we got the deeper pullback we were looking for. This is a pretty deep pullback. We got the deeper uh, we were looking at uh, for the news, uh, for, uh, looking for, but the news of Evergrande filing for bankruptcy could certainly have been a catalyst here, as we saw the majority of the move happen Thursday after the news broke. So definitely that was part of the catalyst, but who cares what the catalyst was? We want to know what the data says about where it's going now. Right now, price is at key support level for thick green line, this line right here. This is at 24, 24, eight up to, to 25.2 sort of level. Uh, after running the prior swing low, which is right here, we ran past it. Uh, so if the bulls want to stage a recover, uh, recovery, now is the time. More weakness here and losing the 24.277 support level, and we could see more blood in the water. So we've got our levels identified. We're going to look at this further on the charts when we're doing TA in a second. But it is, it's, it's important, regardless of how much TA you do and how good you, are, you, you think you are at doing that TA, uh, make sure that you are looking at other charts that other people draw and give you different ideas about levels maybe you didn't identify. That's why I love crypto Twitter so much. Go ahead and put on my. So here we are here. This is another way to look at it. Broken down even, uh, even more intently. We still have a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, barely. We still have a higher low. If we get a lower low here, that's going to be when I really think that we're going to come up and get a relief rally that potentially could be a lower high and potentially a, a bit more downside before the halving, before we get resolution of the upside. As it stands right now, we're still sitting on the edge of that cliff. What do you guys think? You think we're going to hold above this level and maybe crab sideways or quick relief back up? Let me know your thoughts. Coming here, one of the things we've been talking about on this channel is the pressure that the, the, the futures market, the derivatives, the, the leverage gives us good signal as to where the majority of the interest lies in terms of direction. Why? We can look at funding rates. We can look at how much open interest there is. We can look at all these different things. And I break all this down in uh, BitLab Academy in the course section. Uh, if you come over here to BitLab Academy, if you haven't, Checked out BitLab Academy. Check it out, bitlabacademy.com. And you can use Give Me 30 for 30% off your first month if you go to the All Access. But you also get 30% off uh, every, every month if you do the BitLab Pro, which is uh, essentially this uh, the option that you have right here at the top. And this gives you all the indicators, all of uh, the courses, as well as a premium Discord. Uh, and if you're already a member of BitLab, just All Access, you if you sign up for this, you do get 50% off since you're already a member. Um, just to account in, in case you had already paid uh, this month. Um, but coming over here to the courses, we break, we break all this stuff down about open interest and uh, the funding rates and all this stuff coming in here to trading fundamentals. Uh, There's a lot of content in here, so definitely check that out if you haven't. So coming over here to the open interest, what we can see is look at this. Binance, this is just on Binance. Look at this. This is this drop right here, that huge drop that we had. If we come back over here to Bitcoin, this huge drop right here, massive drop. I mean, this was uh, scary. This was very scary. This is a 20% drop. In the context of what we're looking at, though, it's just a boom, 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 boom. You see? And on the move that just uh, uh, took place, we're coming down to the same levels of drop and open interest. Lots of longs got liquidated. Binance open interest levels reset to March drop levels. So are things being reset? Well, let's look at another chart. Caleb Franzen shows here, Bitcoin is flashing an important signal with the 52-week Williams percent R indicator uh, signal. Full oscillation from lower to upper bound, from lower to upper bound. Fall under the upper bound. 
Ball under the upper bound. Consolidation after a momentum thrust have occurred in new bull markets. Even 2019, buyers just needed patience. So let's look at this. This is 2019. This is that push after the, after the collapse from about 6,500 down to about 3,200. Then we move from 3,200. Look at this. This uh, Williams percent R is on the bottom here. And we move from there all the way up to about $13,800. What happens? We pushed up, lost the lower bound, came up, retested it, and moved down. This signal that we, uh, you know, had a pullback. Now, look how fast this rise was and look how sort of, I don't want to say belabored, but a, a little bit slower this breakdown was. And then, you know, we got, we had a bit of a push, but then this was cut short by the global economic shutdown right here in March 2020. That's what this little deviation is. Point being is, we have two different, two different paths that this could take based on previous cycles. We see this oscillation from low to high and back down with a higher low here, but almost, almost, uh, almost covers the entire range here on the Williams percent R back to the downside before resetting to move back up. Now, looking back here at the 2015 cycle, when we had the low, we worked our way up a little bit. Once we started moving up here, we did right here. We had a bit of a push up. This could be akin to this move right here. And as this broke down, we Williams percent R did break down, came up, got a little bit of a rejection, but then came back up and consolidated sideways for the rest uh, for the remain, remainder of the bull run. So don't look at 2019 and say, okay, I'm going to wait until the Williams percent R comes all the way back down because we can see in these two different instances here, we had two entirely different performances of the strength of the market and how things played out. So this time was different from this time because a number of different factors. In the 2015, 2016, 2017 run, there is a little bit of uh, growing awareness about Bitcoin and people cannot believe price was breaking, you know, once we broke down uh, up from 1,200 back down to 200. Uh, and then, you know, we had this run all the way up to, you know, $20,000. Once we started really pushing, there was also history. We had some time time in market and started proving itself the media awareness you know the 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 it's not just you know behind closed doors with a couple nerds like it was back in 2010 2011 wasn't only being used on silk road we're starting to see you know meaningful things happen here and we also had quantitative quantitative easing back here so markets were really really pushing up 2019 2018 into 2019 we had this growing awareness about, you know, understanding the uh, Bitcoin cycles, the halving cycles. Uh, there's crypto YouTube started really, really pumping into from 2018 into 2020, uh, 2018 into 2022. That's when, you know, the growing awareness and some, you know, some poor education, but growing awareness for people in the space about what the me mechanisms and the mechanics and the, the uh, you know, how the digital asset ecosystem is set up the cycles understanding technical analysis all these things and so i think this had a little bit of a part to play there and also uh we're having a little bit of a, a supply shock back here uh, as well as there's growing awareness about the strength of long-term holding but then on the sell-off here we had this you know catastrophe of, of 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 the pandemic global economic shutdown and then we had mass money printing right here, mass quantitative easing that then immediately got truncated by, you know, very strong quantitative tightening. So these, this time is different and it's okay. We can account for why it's different. We don't even need to really explain why it's different. We just need to know that we need to look at a variety of different variables on a regular basis so that we can inform our decision based on what the data is saying now and what the various different uh, opportunities for price action could be. Because the market doesn't care if you want to go long or you want to go short. The market's going to do what it does, and it's going to eat you alive if you don't manage your risk and if you don't have a strategy in place. So let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to be d diving into the TA relatively early today. Uh, we got a couple more things and about two, two or three news stories. I'm just going to glance over, but we're going to do a bunch of TA here. So stick around. Everybody hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. And we can see right here. Very important. From an RSI perspective, on the daily time frame within a year, whenever RSI was oversold, three times out of four, price surged. Now it looks more oversold than in the past four occurrences. So we can see, boom, price surge. This was very low. You can't see it because of my face. 
very low. And did price surge here? No, but if you really wanted to go and measure it, you can say that from this uh, draw drawdown here, from this point here where this started getting into the very oversold area, this is a pretty significant move. If you're swing trade or uh, you know scalp trading this or position trading this, uh, you know over the course of you know uh, a, a few weeks, about a month and a half, this is actually a pretty significant move. So this did interact, although the price did continue down. But we're also an established downtrend here. And we also got the Luna collapse right here. Now we got oversold again, pretty significant move up, which in this case was a relief rally because we're in a bear market over here. And then as this collapsed down, we had stair step, stair step, stair step, FTX collapse. Look how oversold it is. We consolidated sideways, a little bit of a fake out to the upside, a pullback here. And if you remember right in the zone, right in this zone, uh, Bitcoin strategy platform, right in that zone, Hold on a second. Every time I come to this dang thing, I got to log in. Urgh. There we go. You remember right in that zone, the FTX collapse. We also had, this is that zone right here. We we're just looking at, look at right as FTX collapses, just after this, we have this huge influx of global capital, global liquidity, sorry. Huge influx front running this move to the upside, explosive move to the upside, mind you. So when we come back over to this chart, right on this uh, drawback right here, across this entire time, this is when the global liquidity was really going up. But we also, despite the global liquidity, look how oversold, look how weak, let's actually say it that way, look how weak the RSI is right here. And when we get very weak readings, it tends to you know, oscillate everything in these cycle. Everything in this market has cycles, whether it's indicators, price action, signals, uh, volatility, everything, if it's very compressed, then it goes very expanded. If it's very weak, then it goes very, very strong. It's always going to oscillate between those two. The thing that we have to uh, really figure out when we're trading is what's going to be the time forecast of when that move is going to take place from, from X to Y, whether it's weak to strong, from uh, compressed to expanded, et cetera. In this case, we get very oversold. We, we can see on a other broader data set that we're getting a huge influx of capital into global markets with global liquidity on the rise. And we see that this, you know, the RSI is going up here as this is kind of going sideways. We get a little bit of a relief, comes back down, but we have a higher low here. And now we have a bit of a trend line on the RSI and then it explodes to the upside. So over here, look how oversold we are on the RSI. Look how weak we are on the RSI. It's incredible. Now this does not mean price immediately go up. Things kind of uh, historical data sets that we're seeing on you know a relative basis can always be broken. This happens every time. This well, thing setups are always made to be broken. So know that, especially when we have a little bit of uncertainty about what's going on with monetary policy and you know things just things going on globally. Now coming right here, Bitcoin. Uh, uh, Bitcoin. Can this number possibly show a peak sign of disbelief? The latest week's Bitcoin net taker volume was more remarkable than all the bloodiest stages. Look at this. Just very, very strong sell-off. Uh, very strong sell-off on market, uh, market orders, essentially. Um, and if we scroll down, actually, that's not what I want to do. Wanted, here we go. This is what I want to show. After a volatile week, net ticker volume aggregates the most significant data, uh, significant negative data shorts from the beginning of 2022 to the present uh, $3 billion. $3 billion. Meanwhile, when comparing data on Bitcoin, long liquidations, uh, we can easily recognize that the number, uh, the largest number belongs to Deribit, Binance, and BitMEX exchanges. And these uh, same exchanges are currently holding outstanding short selling rates. So we can see on this, this means there's still, there's still uh, a high premium on uh, short uh, shorts. What we were saying a second ago about Max Payne, when there's a lot of, when there's everybody betting on a direction, the Max Payne is the opposite direction. So if we're getting a huge amount of outstanding short and we can tell that by the by the fees, then 
Very interesting. Now, this is another one right here, the Bitcoin NVT Golden Cross. Now, on this, the last thing to watch out for is the NVT uh, Golden Cross, a, modif a modified network value to transaction index that provides local tops and bottoms. It is the fifth time the NVT Golden Cross has been lower than minus 1.6 since the bear market started. So we can see this right here. Comes down here. We get a little bit of a move up. It fails, though, because the, the, the bulls aren't ready. Comes down. This dips down again. This is FTX collapse right here. Dips down right here. Starts moving up. Kind of front ran this move here. Comes back down. Drops right here on this on this drop. Slingshot. Comes down here on this drop. Slingshot. What is to happen here? Do we have lower to go? Or is something setting up to really uh, put some put some smiles on a lot of people's faces? <laughs> well, we got to see. Well, let's go ahead and go through a couple of news stories really quick. And uh, then we're going to jump right into the charts. Uh, again, I got, uh, let me see if I got the list of alts from all you people that uh, posted. I don't know if I did. There we go. Saw Tooth Hiker, I just saw your message. I'll get that sorted. Um, now, coming over here. All right. So, we just talked about the RSI. We don't need to go further on that. It's the lowest it's been since the COVID crash. Can you, can you believe that? Woo. It's pretty good. And you know what? This is incredibly bullish. You want to know why this is bullish? This is bullish because if you look at this chart, how low RSI was. We just looked at it in a different view. Now, we're going to talk about it in this way. If you think about this, Global economic shutdown. Look how look how over so look how weak this was, and the, how low the market was here. And look at how weak this is here, but how high the price is relative to this zone. This shows growing strength of Bitcoin as a community, as an asset class, as a, I mean everything. This is how this is how weak it was, and price got down to here, and we're getting down to those same levels, and price is exponentially higher than it is here. That's, that's good news. Growth, adoption, something we want to see. Now, if we come over to, I do want to point out this, uh, Bitcoin on-chain on data suggests Bitcoin could not, is not just out of the woods yet. So I just shared a bunch of potentially bullish shutups in terms of the data that suggests maybe we get max pain by going up and wrecking all these short sellers. Well, let's, let's just kind of take a look at this real quick. Bitcoin bulls were caught off guard with the largest sell off in 2023, sending Bitcoin below 25 K a deleveraging, uh, a deleveraging in future markets is likely the catalyst. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the ingredients, but there was a lot of other news stories on the day that made that crash happen in four min minutes, but that crash also happened in four minutes because of the over-leveraged position the market was in. You see how these things work together? Uh, however, a bigger concern may be the 88.3% of short-term holder supply now held in an unrealized loss. This means they're holding it under the price from which they bought it at. Now, the question is, can some of these short-term holders hold it past that 155-day mark and migrate into, matriculate into, good SAT word there, matriculate into being long-term holders because once you endure something uh, and glass node data has shown this once holders once holders hold the asset for longer than 155 days there's statistically a dramatically smaller chance that they're going to capitulate so according to the analysts leverage flush out across the derivatives markets cleared more than 2.5 billions worth of open interest within hours while the options markets have since seen a sharp repricing and volatility premiums Open interest remains remarkably stable. Also notable is that the spot markets are uh, largely top-heavy amid uh, such a high number of short-term holders with unrealized losses. I will push back on this in some capacity. Uh, if they're talking about the ratio of the, the number of short-term holders out there, and there's a high ratio of, of, of the short-term holders holding an un, unrealized losses, I'll agree with this, but in reality, you know, you have over seven, about 75% ish of the market is long-term held coins. So this still is a uh, somewhat disproportionately smaller effect on the market, but it's still a significant, uh, you know, it's still a significant amount. If, if you have 25% of the market that is uh, a high percentage of that 25% is holding underwater, they're also the type of people that capitulate in, in the face of, uncertainty so 
if we do drop below the price levels that we're at right now, where are we at? Uh, Bitcoin, come up here. If we do drop below this low right here, uh, 25.8. I do think that we're going to come back down here uh, into the lower 25s. Let me go to the eight hour. And uh, potentially even come down and test test uh, this next support line that's over here. But I think I think if we do come down, we I I, I think it's likely that we will get a liqu at least a liquidity grab wick uh, over the course of a week, whether it's this week or next week or something uh, something in the near future to come down and tap liquidity in here. I, I'd put that at about a thirty eight for 38 to 40 percent uh, possibility but based on everything that's going on with all the news and all of the you know fear of people going with price go down I, i'm not i'm not betting heavy on that happening i think it's less than a 50 percent chance um but i do think it's likely that's why i still have these levels marked down here and we still if we lose this level of 23 740 uh 20 uh 24 000, then I do think that we're going to be seeing a lot more pain to the downside, potentially coming down to test this sort of range right there, which is uh, about twenty-one five to twenty-two thousand dollars. But again, there's a lot of work to, that would need to happen for that to take place. Let me go ahead and delete this uh, right there. Uh, but let's look at a couple more things, and we're going to dive in all the TA. Um, where were we at? Uh, we got all that. Okay, now let's. Hash rate is on the rise. Miners unfazed by the price crash. This is so we had the, a little bit of a bearish sort of setup there. Now a little bit of a bullish. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin mining hash rate set another all time high. This is strength of network because you have all these miners out there still making money. Uh, there, if there's a lot of miners competing to mine coin, then the hash rate uh, not only the difficulty goes up, but also the hash rate becomes much stronger. You have, and so the more miners you have actively competing to mine, the stronger the hash rate is, which gives uh, a positive fundamental intrinsic value to Bitcoin because that means the more miners there are, the more secure the network is. So this is a good thing. Uh, we don't need to dive into this uh, much further. We did get a, we are getting a little bit of a pullback. We can see on this blue line right here, but uh, we're still, you know, pushing higher. Uh, okay. The last time this happened was eight months ago. The Bitcoin fear and greed index pointed at least, uh, at least, Pointed at, at less than 40 in the past four days, which has not happened since January. So the fear and greed index, if we go to, was it alternative.me? Yeah. So we see we're printing right now at a 38. This goes back to what we were talking about. If it's markets uh, overwhelmingly fearful, that's when something, you know, that's when you get into these moments that things tend to get explosives. That we can actually see this graphed out on the chart. If we look at max right here, that's not what I want to look at. Where is it? It's, I think it's on, uh, look into Bitcoin. I think it's here. There's another version of this chart I like better. And that is, yeah, right here. Because this maps it out on a color code and you can see. So, Look, I mean, I, they just added this. I didn't see this. Now, now you can see exactly where we're at. But you can see the different colors here. Very greedy, very fearful. And when you get into these darker colors, you can also see the score when you put your mouse over it. When you get into these lower, yes, it can kind of be low for some time. 12, 14, 15, 18, 19, 13, 11, 13, 11. But this is setting up for, you know, max fear is setting up for max opportunity. You see, again, max fear, max opportunity. Max fear opportunity fear opportunity fear doesn't play out every time continue follow uh fall down uh fear a little bit of opportunity here fall but you're seeing over time you can read the metrics based on what the fear and greed levels are as well as these other on-chain data charts that we show to give you better context for when you're looking at the price action and pulling together the data and the oscillators and the information so that you can stack all the things in your favor and weigh the context of the market and the sentiment and the on-chain data that's showing you the actions and the behaviors of everybody within the market. And then when you're looking at price action, you have that in the back of your brain when you're saying, okay, this bullish pattern makes me want to go long and trade this breakout 
but I'm also seeing a huge amount of bearish neg uh, bearish data out there that's suggesting if that happens, this potentially could be a bear trap. So it can help you adjust your risk management and vice versa. If you're seeing a huge bearish signal, a bearish pat chart pattern, you know, in the charts, then you weigh all this other context and you say, okay, I maybe I'll take a small position on this and then I'll, you know, I'll have my my laddered exits already planned out, but I'm also gonna have very tight stop loss because this looks like this is it's trying to trick people into going this direction. So we can weigh all these things together. Now there's a one, there's I think that was it. I think it's time. I think it's time for TA. It's time to get into it. Do you guys want to see some TA? Uh, I did not get a list, I don't believe, from, from. Uh, okay, we got it. Got the list. Got the list. Shout out to all the mods. Thank you for all your help all the time. I appreciate you. Can you guys see the numbers on this chart, or you want me to make this a little bit bigger? Oops. We can make it a little bigger. All right, let's uh, get out of this chart. We're coming right here. Uh, all right, first up, Bitcoin. We've talked about it, yes, but we're going to talk about it again, and then we're going to set the context, and we're going to we're going to be breaking down uh, the altcoins here in just a few minutes. So let's do it. What's up, Paper Beach Rock? How you doing? Got 175 people in the room. Everybody, hit that like button. Join us here. Still got about 50% of the people that watch on a daily basis who are not subscribed and part of our community. So get involved here. All right. So I pointed this out the other day. We have the one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave. I actually, I pointed this out about uh, two weeks ago. And then I was calling for a potential ABC correction. And what did we get? I mean, we got the, we had, the, we, I think I called this about right here. And we got the B to the line. I mean, within like five dollars of where I just suggested this may come, based on this line. And then we see the the C corrective wave. And if we really look at this, we can see the where is go to big get. Yeah, see on this one, the wick comes all the way all the way down here below this uh, twenty five line. If we come back over to the Bitstamp one, depending on what exchange you're on, but yeah, the price came down into the same zone exactly, exactly as we drew it. And the reason why I drew the C wave down to the zone was because of this, uh, this uh, bounce here, this rejection here, this rejection here. So this says that said that this is going to be an area that uh, liquidity will likely try and test. It's exactly what happened. Now the question is going to be: Let's go ahead and delete some of these things. We can see we actually had. Come on. We had a uh, one hour chart. We had a little bit of a bear flag here. We did not yet follow through to this target. What's the target based on this sort of zone right here? Uh, we did not do that. Uh, is it still in the cards? Well, coming back out here to the daily, double click. All right, coming back out here to the daily, we can see, let's go ahead and delete, uh, let's move this over just so we can have it there for the future. Uh, looking at the daily, it actually looks like this is trying to form a little bit of a bear flag currently. If we have more consolidation sideways, a little bit of a relief down, and then maybe and maybe we get a Bart, an inverted Bart Simpson pattern, which would basically look something like this. You know, a little chop here, and then very quick move back up, a little rejection, and then continuation of the upside. That's something that very well could play out. Especially if a lot of people start getting burnt out on any sort of bullish hope. We get a lot of people trying to short on leverage. And then you get a bit of a short squeeze and move this back up. But as it stands right now on the daily chart, one of the things I want you to point out. And before we do this, I just want to say the new BitLab trading stack is finally here. We started giving, we started sending out all the permissions for everybody that was a BitLab Pro member. Because uh, we have to do them each individually one at a time. But we're, uh, you know, our, our devs in the background are hard at work uh, adding all the permissions to everybody that is a BitLab Pro member. They're already done. Now we're working uh, one by one, adding all the permissions to anybody that is a BitLab trading stack uh, subscriber. You're going to be getting those added uh, over the next 48 hours, essentially, because we have to do each one of them one by one uh, within TradingView. So you're going to want to look in, uh, you'll be, should be getting a notification from TradingView when you get added the permissions. 
but then also you can come here when you're trying to find uh, where it's at. If you want to see it, maybe you missed the email. Uh, you can look over the next 48 hours and come up here to this indicators tab right here. Come down to invite only scripts and you can go to uh, in that. If you've been added, if the permissions are there, you're going to look for this BitLab underscore Academy, BitLab underscore Academy, and you're going to be looking for BitLab Intelligence, BitLab Trend Fuel, and BitLab Volume. We consolidated all the signals we wanted to present within three indicators. So whether or not you have a paid trading view or not, you can have it uh, within, you can have all of them up at the same time. And we have, I mean, it's so much stuff in the new BitLab trading stack, uh, and it's all integrated in a way that's very understandable for beginners and has a lot of advanced signals for the pros so you can turn things on to get more data if you are a more advanced user and want a deeper look into the data. So once you add these into your chart, uh, essentially come up here to the top. Let's actually go through it. I'm gonna teach you guys something, whether you are interested in the BitLab trading stack or not, this is important for any indicator set and also your use of TradingView. So you wanna add the indicators to your charts. Come up here. Type in, uh, go to invite only scripts, type in BitLab, and you can see it'll say BitLab Intelligence, BitLab Trend Fuel, BitLab Volume, and you're going to click on all three of them. If you add stars on them, by the way, you will get them right here in the favorites window. So I got a, I have a ton of different indicators I look at uh, for trading purposes, but we can see all of them have been added. Where's the Trend Fuel? Probably going to take a second because it's uh, my computer's slow. Come on, computer. Okay, you mother. <sighs> Nothing is easy. Okay. Boom. Now. So you come here, invite only scripts. You go to BitLab. This is, this is a function of my computer running slowly. BitLab Intelligence. BitLab Trend Fuel. BitLab volume, and for whatever reason, my computer, there it goes, BitLab trend fuel. Okay, so once you have these up, then you come up here to the to indicators templates. You click indicators templates. You do save indicator template, and you type, you type in whatever you want, BitLab, BitLab stack, but whatever, and then you click save. And once you click save, come back here, uh, come back here to the four squares, which is right here next to the indicators. You see this four squares indicator templates, and then you go down to the one that you just saved and put a star on it. And then you'll have a very quick way to go between your different indicator setups. You see how I can go very quickly between different setups. So that's how we do it. Now, what we want to see is where we're at right now. When we're looking at all this stuff, we got the BitLab volume here giving us our liquidity, uh, basically order block zones. We have the trend fuel showing us essentially what is the fuel of the move? How much more steam is in the engine to get it continuing to go that direction or to potentially reverse direction? And then on the BitLab intelligence, we have the signals driven from price action, how they interact with different price structures, as well as moving averages, as well as volume within candles, all these things combined to give you a broad range of signals to see what's going on. You can even double click on this, come to style. You can turn on stochastics and RSI and get a lot more data here and we can see in addition to all this let's actually come over here put this on a vertical now we have our dashboard here on the bottom right gives us a quick look of which signals within this oscillator are bullish neutral or bearish and we can see right here on this move to the downside this breakdown you see how we have this uh, whitish gray these uh this is essentially the the momentum waves these w white waves but on these white waves where you see these green bars here, this means there's a lot of buying momentum, a lot of, there's a lot of volume under this buying momentum right here, suggesting that this is going to be, you know, a strong move up here. We have a lot of red right here, which means there's a lot of selling volume. And in addition to that, you can see on the buying volume, we also have this teal candle showing there's a lot of volume on these candles uh, agreeing with the move here. We have a lot of volume on these candles agreeing with the push down. And we do have the view up trying to come up. We have the stochastics kind of resetting here at the zero line, but we still have a lot of selling volume on this daily that has not turned white yet. So there's still a lot of selling pressure, but what's happening here 
is it's being met in kind with bullish buying pressure, which is why you have a fall and now you have price going sideways because you have an equilibrium between the bulls and the bears. So, so seeing the equilibrium here, the question is going to be which one's going to give up first. I think it may take a little bit of a catalyst, positive or negative news story. And whichever one of those comes first will kind of be something that drives uh, the engagement up or down. And remember, there's a lot of institutions that are coming into the market here very shortly. And so there's some likelihood that there could be some uh, manufactured downward pressure from large players. Uh, so j just, just be careful about what's going on in the charts. All right. So let's get down to let's get down to a smaller time frame. We're going to look at the one hour. So looking at the one hour, we do have a large wave to the downside. Comes up, smaller wave to the downside. So there is a bit, there's a bit of uh, increasing pressure to the upside here, or lack of follow through from the from the bears currently. That doesn't mean it can't tick up very quickly. So as it stands right here. Essentially, we have a little bit of a range created by these order blocks here from the BitLab volume. You see these, uh, uh, these blocks here it has to do with the liquidity and the underlying uh, trading uh, when we get into certain levels. And in this case, we have a bit of a sideways range here. So if price action does start pushing up, we've got the point of control, this teal line here, point of control being the highest amount of volume traded on, on, the, on the range we're looking at right here, this visible range, how, which price level has the highest amount of volume traded and that's what this teal line is right here and that's right in line with where this uh, order block is directly above us so if price does push up here i'm going to be very careful to uh pay attention to what the price interactivity happens here if we push up here get a small rejection and slice through that would be ultimately quite bullish if we push up here and get a strong rejection and come down and test this that would be definitely leaning on the side of the bears and potentially a follow through to the downside. So this is going to be a key zone right here. This 26, four to 26, five zone. This is something that we're going to want to be paying attention to. Let me see. Uh, uh, oh, she, uh, So I had a message on my internal stuff here. We're dancing with 26,000. If we lose that 26,000 level, which is, you know, I mean, we get, um, I would say, honestly, if we lose the, this level right here, if we lose uh, a little bit below this even, I would say about 25.7, then I do think that we're going to be in for a little bit of a ride further down for Bitcoin. And that would be probably tapping into the to the low twenty low twenty fives, high twenty four nines. That's going to be that's going to let us know if we're able to hold there and bounce from that level. That'll let us know that the the first half of the year bullish narrative is not completely gone. If we if we're able to hold in this region here and move up from here, then that's a good thing. If we come down here and lose this level, then we're going to be tapping potentially even testing that CME gap down in the the low twenties. So know that. All right, now it's time to do Turbo TA, run through all the stuff you guys want to run through. So many lines on this chart. And look at that. We're, yeah, we're flirting. Flirting with disaster, but it's not disaster yet. And it's only disaster if you don't have a plan. So. Uh, we are doing... This doesn't let me... there. Uh, okay, I can't get my mouse to drag this. So there we go. That's too small. There we go. All right. Uh, Ethereum. We talked about this. Same thing as what we were talking about with uh, with Bitcoin. If we lose this sort of level right here, I do think we're going to be testing down likely uh, 1460 between between. Between basically high 13s to 
to, to mid 14s and somewhere in this region here, because we have this level here, you see, which is right on the 1.382. And then we also have the 1.618, which is exactly what this low is here. So I think somewhere in this region here, if we lose this level, I think Ethereum is coming down here. If we do get a bounce here, if we do get a bounce here, then we do have this line right here, uh, this trend line. And if we bat, if we do get some sort of impulse to the upside directly above us at 1700, I think it's going to be a little bit of a stopping point uh, hesitation. If we're able to take that out, then I do think uh, you know potentially in the mid 1700s. But I'm not going to be ultra bull out of there until until we take this line out. Uh, where's that list that I got from you guys? I'm looking at it right now. All right. Let's look at, uh, we got to take a look at our baby girl XRP. How you, how you feel it? How you look at, look at that. Descending channel broke deviation to the downside. Look at this better opportunity buy here than before the, the uh, XRP pump. And I want you all to notice something. Be honest. When this pumped and it, you did not have bags yet, or you didn't have the bags where you wanted them to, did you have a feeling like, dang it, I missed it. I wish I got more before the news broke. Be honest. I know I felt like that a little bit. But then I also reminded myself, prices tend in assets tend to give you another opportunity if you're patient. In this case, not only did it give you another opportunity, it gave you a better opportunity than before this happened. Quick reversal back to the upside. We're sitting right in, there's a huge order block in this zone right here. Uh, and look at this. We did get rejected be uh, below this low here. Uh, let me move this. Too many things on my screen. All right. But we are sitting. We are sitting right here in this zone. The question here is: Is this? It's it's kind of hard to tell. It looks uncertain. Uh, are we back inside this channel, or do we deviate into it and push back out, and we're sitting for a potential rejection back down? Well, if we look at this on the bottom, we see on the BitLab uh, trend fuel, we see right here on these triangles, on, the, on this momentum wave. This is means, uh, I, don't, I don't want to call it a buying signal. It's a buying setup uh, because it's saying that the momentum is reversing back the other direction. And we see right here, right when we get this signal, it's starting to bounce a little bit. And then right on this, then we got the move up into resistance could have taken that position from the triangle to the resistance sold and then we come across and we're on the eight hour here come down we get a we get the triangle a, a little late in this move because this was such a fast move and then back up into it uh so this is why this is why regardless of any indica indicator setup you use macd rsi stochastics market cipher bitlab trading stack lux algo it doesn't matter what you use the point with these to make good and smart trade decisions is to use a variety of different signals that these indicators provide to make smart decisions. So if a long wick to the downside, push up into the 50 moving average right here, rejection down. So we are not out of the woods yet just because we have this sort of V-shaped correction. The question is going to be, can we get back over this 50 moving average? Let's get down to the four hour. So see this, this is something that you need to note. Look at this high, lower high, lower high. Momentum is weakening for the bulls uh, once they cross this zero line. So as this came up, we did get a little uh, push above. As it, as it stands right now, this is still above the zero line, but it's looking like it's trying to, it's looking currently like it's trying to come down. We're not seeing uh, any sort of strong increase in money flow here, which is uh, this blue and purple wave. Uh, when it's gray like it, this, it means it's a bit neutral as to the money it hasn't moved. And so we're seeing if this does come back down, we could be in for, because look at this. This is something you need to pay attention to. What do you see here? Increased momentum fuel to the downside. So if this does get rejected here, there is a setup that this could even test back down into the low 40s uh, from where we're at now, which is, you know, a 20% 20, 20 move. So pay attention to that. If we are, are able to hold this level and have this momentum expand back to the upside, have money flow come in, then we can test up into this region. I'd be looking for a potential rejection at this dotted line right here. If you can't see it, I have it kind of... Uh, 
Come on. There we go. You see how we have this level, level, level? So if we do come up into this region, I'd be watching at 56 cents. If we take that out, we have a lot of work above us. So we just need to be a little bit patient with XRP. I do think there's going to be a setup for potentially another opportunity down in this region down here. Uh, what else did you got? Matic. Automatic, super fast, electrolytic. All right. Too many lines on the chart. Too many lines on the chart. Oh, look at this. Just notice this. So we had rejection, 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 support all through here. And then down here, look at this. We had the wick beyond it. But ultimately, this was the support uh, that we found. Now, where we're at right now, look at this. We're finding support right on this previous low. See that? So if we lose this, if Matic loses this line, I do think we're going to be testing down here into the uh, 53s. If we lose this line, let, let's, yeah. We do have this line as well, option J, which is the low, ultimately the low there in June. That was a low, but th th look, some people felt like they missed it from the 50s all the way up to the 90s. But are we getting another opportunity because we're patient? So let's see, let's find the resolution in this region, have it move out of this uh, and ultimately break beyond 70 cents uh, is when we're going to start to see uh, strong bullish initiative again. As it stands right now, we do see we had a little bit of a bullish divergence. You can see with this, uh, you can see with the, come on, these lines right here, two triangles. But the thing about this is, you can also see this momentum starting to roll back over to the downside. This is finding resistance right on this trend signal line. It pushed its way through this dynamic resistance zone, but as soon as it basically came near this trend signal line, this 50 EMA, DEMA, uh, we can see that this is uh, basically ultimately causing pressure. We had a little bit of a fake out, got rejected right at the weekly VWAP right here, this, this yellow line, and now we're falling down. Now, the question is going to be, can we hold this level and ultimately move up from here? As it stands right now, let's go down to the 30-minute and see what the signal's saying on the 30-minute. All right. 30 minute, we had a little bit of a move up, which is right here. We do have a lower high here, but as this moved down to the downside, this is starting to eclipse back to the upside. It's looking like we're getting a little bit on a very small time frame, a little bit of a triple. It's attempting a little bit of a triple bottom right here. The question is going to be, how does this interact at this level? Because this is, this is not really making moves. Uh, and you see, even on the smaller time frame, this is trying to roll back over. So I, I would be very patient with Matic. If we lose this level, 55, 7, 8, uh, I'd be looking for a move down to basically down 3 cents, down to 53. If we're able to bounce here and take out 58 cents, 58 to 58, 8, then I think we'd be looking for a larger move up. But as it stands right now, it's, it's still in the sideways range. Um, let's see. Well, else we got? We got Matic. No, we did it, Matic. Ada. Let's do Mana. We haven't done Mana in a long time. Mana. What's going on with Decentraland? Let's see. We're on the 15-minute chart. That's not going to give us any data. All right. Look at this. A little bit of a... And Tom Crown pointed this out, which I, I do agree with. When you have these fast moves down and then this rounding like this, this very often can it result in essentially like a, a bottom bounce double bottom launch but we have to make sure that the data is aligning with that this had the same thing happen to it we see this with the the bit lab intelligence has this uh basically 50 moving average to 20 moving average with the ema ribbon on it and we have this dynamic resistance zone in here that this is getting rejected at each time this travels all the way through it here deviates beyond the trend signal line here and put pulls right back it's sitting right on the edge of this. This is trying to make a decision. Is this going to break back down to this zone right here and find a, essentially a potential double bottom at the 29 cent sort of level? This is going to be regionally somewhere in this zone, 29.3 to 29.5. Uh, 29 uh, but th this is looking like it's making an attempt. Let's go to the 24 minute. Look at how much red is on this. You guys see this? 
is saying, uh, even though the momentum's coming up right here, this is, this is suggesting that there's a lot of weakness. VWAP's weak. Uh, stochastic K-line's weak. Uh, the uh, stochastic topped or bottomed uh, saying bearish. Uh, trend wave one and trend wave two, a.k.a. the momentum and the money, money flow. Uh, and we can see that this has got a lower forming a downtrend right here. This is also looking like a stair step pattern. This this looks like at minimum it's going to test in 29.5, likely come down to 29.8, uh, 28.9, I mean. Um, if we do continue down, uh, we can visit that then. But this, this, as it currently stands, ignoring all the other stuff, this does look like it's trading uh, a little bit in this in this range. So let's see what happens once we find uh, any sort of a bounce or rejection here at uh, 29.58. As it stands right now, this is looking like this is trying to come down for the double bottom on this on this move right here. Uh, beep, beep, beep. Oh, my bad. That was the dump truck loading up. <laughs> uh, Alexander G. Blah, 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 blah. Mm, all right. Just reading the comments. Uh, let's do render. We don't ever really talk about render, but I know a lot of people like it. I think it's a hell of a good project. Uh, stair step down. I mean, this is just like, this came down, tapped into this. Look, I mean, these order blocks are so strong with the, the BitLab trading stack. By the way, if anybody's interested in getting the BitLab trading stack, head over to bitlabacademy.com. You can come right here to indicators, go to BitLab trading stack right here. The BitLab trading stack. You see the drop down menu? Boom, right there. You can sign up right here, or you can come over to enroll now, and you can get everything that we've got, the premium Discord, all access to all of our courses, as well as the trading stack, signing up right here for the BitLab Pro right here. Um, that's where you get it. Um, now, looking here, order blocks here from the BitLab volume that we see this tapped right into it. As it stands right now, this is also similarly, try to make an attempt up. And it, all it did, this attempt up, you see this uh, convergence towards the zero line, meaning it's contracting back towards zero. Uh, all it did was not even achieve the same high as this previous range here. And this is starting to collapse back down. This is on the four-hour chart. And look, we did lose this level right there. See that? Lost that level. This is suggesting to me, is it going to be like uh, Piano Matty B says, where it wicks, it will candlestick, meaning wick came down here. Is this going to fill... Fill this with all the liquidity coming down to tap the zone down at dollar twenty-five. Potentially, what does it look like on the one hour? Yeah, this is still angled down. However, this is starting to curve about. Um, but the, yeah, this is looking weak. If it breaks past this line right here, you see this line is part of the BitLab intelligence. This has to do with where there's been uh, vol high volume moves and then stopping volume. And where that where that zone is, you can also utilize these as a bit of a stop loss sort of zone. So if you are in this move, uh, the, this would be at a dollar thirty five, dollar thirty, dollar thirty five one dot three five four. Uh, if we lose this level, then I do think we're coming down into uh, into these levels down here. Um, you know, basically dollar twenty five ish region, which it does look like it's trying to make that move. I bet if we measure this, let's check this out. I bet if we measure this, it's going to also agree with us on that hypothesis. So measure that. Look at that. <laughs> Price action tells us where it's going to go. And this would take us right to dollar fifty, uh, dollar twenty-five five. One two five five five. One two five five. All right. Uh, you know what? I said I'd do it. Even not, even though I'm not a Pepe, ma a Pepe, Pepe master, I'll do Pepe for you guys because I've been saying I'd do it for the last week. I'm not a Pepe trader, but I do some TA for you guys on Pepe. That's okay. Look at this. We had this line drawn. This came down, bounced right off of the previous highs. Now support. Uh, as it's looking right now, this is, I mean, they're all looking the same. Everything's looking the same. This is looking like it's trying to uh, test a bit lower. The line for that is kind of, we've kind of broken it. But if we do it from the wick, then we're kind of adjusting uh, or attempting to uh, potentially break it. Could we get a little bit of a head and shoulders here? Maybe, but this is looking like the, the momentum is trying to expand to the downside. What does it show on a much smaller time frame chart? There's an attempt here. 
that could be argued. We have six bullish divergences right here. Uh, bullish RSI divergence, money flow, stochastics, demand uh, index, uh, momentum bull, on balance volume. But yeah, this even with this is still looking weak because we do look at this. We have all these bullish divergences printed here on the BitLab intelligence, part of the BitLab intelligence. We can see, but we look at the BitLab trend fuel. Look at how much bearishness is in the signals. See this dashboard right here? It says uh, you might want to take a break before you think about long and good, sir. Uh, and so I'd be a little bit hesitant here. Uh, and these things move huge. Uh, so if you need to be patient, you don't need to buy the exact bottom here. Wait till you take out this line right here. This line right here is uh, uh, zero, zero, all the zeros, and then uh, 11, 637, 11, 628, this sort of zone. This previous low, also above this high. If we take out this level right here, uh, this zone right here, then I do think we're going to be starting to make an uptrend and uh, attempting the 14. I mean, I mean, just from this zone alone, that's, that's a 25% move. And then from there to the next zone up would be, yeah. So I, I think right now is it kind of time for patience for these quick movers. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I said I would look at Ben too because you guys wanted to look at Ben. Uh, where's it at? It is. Same, th same thing I'm seeing on all of them. But this one on this time frame looks like it's got a lot more green. Uh, four hour. Looking like it's setting up a bit of a floor, but this also looks like a stair step. So if you're trading this, uh, if we lose this sort of level, then I do think that we will be, we're kind of in price discovery to the downside because of the way it launched. Um, so this is just something I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trading at all. I, I, I have what I'm going to hold. I'm going to be holding it for a minute. Um, in terms of opportunities to the downside, uh, yeah. And to the upside, there's going to be both. I'd be waiting to kind of cross this level and confirm this level and this order block uh, before it starts uh, really moving to the upside. Uh, let's do, do one more. What else we got? Let's, uh, we can do two more. All right, Q and T. It's quant, baby. Let's look at quant. This has been holding around that $100 level, man. All these other, this had a flush down, sure, to $90, but it but was bought up quick. I think this has to do with some of, I don't want to say partnerships, but some of the, uh, some of the communities that they are working with and, uh, and, you know, institutions as well as governments, as well as banks and uh, all this sort of stuff. So this has been holding relatively well. I'd be a little worried if we do lose this line and potentially come down, uh, if potentially come down and tap this liquidity zone down here in the mid eighties, that would be a little bit scary, but it would be phenomenal. What happened to my camera? I don't know. Uh, Oh, my camera died because it's not plugged in. Sorry about that language. There we go. For some reason my camera shut off. Uh, yeah, uh, Link. What's happening to my, there we go. Link, man. This is looking, this is looking like it wants to test down here into the mid fives, 550s, 555, and then ultimately potentially test down here into the low fives. Uh, if we're able to find support in here, we'll talk about that then. But as it stands right now, this is looking like it wants to come down. Uh, finally, to wrap it all out, everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding the bell. Let's talk about Bitcoin before we go. This is making that attempt to the downside. What does it mean? Uh, next stop, if, if we do sort of break this level, which it looks like we're attempting currently, uh, I would be looking for, I would be looking for uh, an attempt, you know, basically testing this zone here, the, the, the tw uh, 25, I mean, first step first, uh, if we, if we break 25, 700, then I do think we're coming down to the low 20, uh, 25, two. And if we lose that, then I do think we're going to be testing somewhere in this range here, but that's what I got for today, guys. I got to run. I think, I think that I'm doing the, um, 
TA on uh, BitBoy today. So come check it out there. Um, say hi. Pop post in those lab coats in the chat. Uh, let's show them what a positive community is, uh, the BitLab Academy crew is all about. But with that, I love you all. I appreciate you all. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe on the way out if you haven't yet. Drop your comments down below if you're watching later. Make sure you head over to bitlabacademy.com. Check out all the stuff that we got there. Sign up with us. Join us in our community. Get in our Discord. And uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you're following us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash at bitlabacademy. But with that, I love you all. That's all I got. Adios. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. Hit that like button, sucker.